Welcome back to Opsley Automotive. I'm Austin and today's newest ride all the way from Everett, Washington is a 1974 Dodge Coronet station wagon. Well, let's take a closer look at it. A little rot there on the dog leg. Maybe some filler in that quarter panel. The gas tank's supposed to go in there, but I believe uh, the previous owner said that it leaked. So he's got, uh, I believe, a boat tank um, inside the car. So I'm going to have to rectify that at some point. Also, uh, the driver's front door, I guess the window regulator is broken. So I'm going to need to get a new one of those so I can roll the window up and down. Nice and solid. Got some of my favorite dog dish hubcaps. Not correct for this year, but still cool looking nonetheless. And a really important thing is that this car has all of its hood letters. I don't know what the deal is, but 1974 Dodge Coronets never have those hood letters. They're always missing. They must break and fall off or something. And this right here is another little cool thing that I had picked up near Salt Lake City. Which you'll see what that is shortly. like this blue color. I've never actually had a 70s car that wasn't earth tone. So this one's a, a new one for me. Looks like the rust is limited to the dog legs on each side. Mirrors missing there. Ah. Uh, and I'm missing this badge on the other side and the custom that was down here. So I'm going to need those. A little rust on the bottom of the bumper guards there. Trunk line, trunk area and spare tire well is solid. Got the classic Y pop there. Frame rails look good. Had a backfire at some point. Got the poofed muffler. All right, well, let's get this thing off this trailer. Take a closer look uh, of the rest of the car. slots
mean, that barely cleared. <laughs> I need a little tune up. Yeah. Burnout test time. Yeah. <laughs> See if it's sure good. Right. What's the uh, local station? 6:30. Radios still work. Yeah. What is that? Number seven. Does the horn work? Nope. Oh no. Not doing good on that. Yeah, so far all my cars don't have working horns. Oh, what, what's up with the uh, mirror hanger there? Boom, dodge. <laughs> Oh, it's like a keychain. That's cool. Yeah. Aftermarket vanity mirror. And there's some cool stuff hiding in here. Oh, very awesome. What? Oh, this car is equipped with a seat belt interlocks system for the starters required by the National Highway Safety Administration for all passenger automobiles manufactured oh, for yeah. sale. Ugh, I remember that on my scamp. The car wouldn't start without the seat belts I guess buckled. this has been bypassed. Yeah, there's just plugs under the seats you unplug. Secret load that's back here. Ooh, what is that? Ooh, we're about to find out. <laughs> What's behind curtain number one? The tailgate window moves very slow, so going to see about lubing that up as well as all the pivot points and latch points. ever been off. It's on four wheel drive here. Well, maybe it has been off because that screw is looking a little questionable. Uh, 
Okay, yeah. All right. Now I'm just going to lubricate everything. Everything that's moving. Every every single piece. that's better cool say that's fixed Real question is how many people are gonna get mad that I'm using this knife instead of a, a screwdriver. It really gets people angry. Which is why I keep doing it. Let's see what's in the back of this thing now that we got it kind of unloaded. I know that this car is a non-passenger, which is what this is for. That's the back third row. And I know that a gas tank has been kind of added to this, so we'll see how that looks. Oh, that's bigger than I thought it was. Ooh screwdriver I could have used that during the uh, tailgate uh, lubrication oh that thing is empty well there's not much going on in here oh another tool mm, a little wet down there so I guess something leaks back here probably this because that's hard as a rock and a four by four is this a dipstick This is a dipstick for like a van, I think. Look how long that is. I don't know what that's doing in here. Okay, odd. And there are seat belts back here for the um, rear seat, and this is part of the headliner retainer strip, so I'm going to move that out of the way so it don't get crushed. All right, that's about all that's going on under there. See what's in the back. One empty gas can. Two empty gas can. I guess that's the shield and mountain hardware for the gas tank, the original one. Spare tire cover. Whoa. 
kind of neat. Nineteen seventy. Motor Trend, August nineteen sixty nine. Ooh, the spider wheel cover or wheel, I should say. There we go. Uh oh, all new seventies Ford Plymouth AMC. Have to check that out later. It's a cool find. See, we got <laughs> enough belts to last a lifetime and a valve cover gasket. Car and driver brake fluid? <laughs> I've never seen that before. That's kind of fun. Made in USA, 1996. Vintage. Oh, look at this bag. That's cool. What's in here? Got a wiper motor, spark plug wire, or spark plugs. Oh, gotta have this. I might actually install that. Check that out, Cal Custom. Can fit a wiper motor. Some uh, lug nuts, a used fuel filter. That's a gasket for a side view mirror. Grease seal and another gasket. And the Chilton's or Haynes Dodge van. This person must have had a Dodge van because there's the repair manual for Dodge van and there's a dipstick for a Dodge van. So I'm guessing he must have had a Dodge van at some point. Ooh. Big block Mopar engines. That might be fun to read. Oh, you can't, you can't be without small block Mopar engines as well. <laughs> that ought to be interesting. Cleaver cutter. Clever cutter? It's got some razor right there. I guess it's for slicing boxes open perhaps. And another lug nut. Let's see. Type F transmission fluid. Okay, let me see what's on the other side. Okay. We got a shark. Uh, air filter. New. The one missing hubcap. Another wiper motor, exhaust gasket. Oh, look at this. Enjoy Coke. What is this? It is full of light bulbs and a good ballast resistor, mainly light bulbs. This looks very 80s. Uh, funnel, another gear shift lever, uh, rag, jumper cables, um, is this the broken window regulator? Oh, it must be, there's the, uh, crank. Maybe this is what's supposed to go in the driver's door. There's something wrong with it, apparently, so, um, have to investigate that. An ignition box. Mm, various hardware and bolts. 
and let's see if anything got trapped under here. Oh, check it out. I wonder if this car came from Kansas. about it. There's a receipt from <laughs> for Taco Bell in 2016. Oh, let's see what the price is. Five bean burritos was $8.45. One Fiesta potatoes, $1.39. One cinnamon twist, a dollar. Total eleven ninety. We'll have to uh, compare that with today's pricing. So this was 9-11-2016 in Linwood, Washington. So fun to do later. We can see that uh, the headliner is pretty much gone. These cars had a card headliner. You can see the, the original one there in the front still there. But um, oh, this car's got rear door light plungers, so the, the dome light works. And uh, what's up here? A box of various fluids. Uh, oil, it looks like. Two cycle oil. Yama Lube. Dex Merc. Power steering fluid, some brake fluid. That's all good stuff to have. There's the gas tank. Supposedly had a leak, maybe. Or maybe it was just dirty, I don't know, I don't really see any holes, but it kind of sounds like, that's probably why, <laughs> let's listen. Oh, yep, so we're gonna have to take that to get cleaned out. Ooh, all right. Okay, that's this aftermarket mirror. Oh, a new ignition and door lock set, it looks like. Oh, let's see what cool stuff's in here. Check this out. Motel 6, 19, January 1st, 1980 directory. So we can find out where all the Motel 6s were. <laughs> Look at that. This is kind of neat. You can figure out what you're going to set your trip, your mileage, and the gallons used, and calculate things. Travel calculator, mileage, gas, time, and call saver from Automark Industries. Set miles traveled at arrow. Read average miles per gallon at number of gallons used. Read average, blah, 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 blah. Oh, and here's your cost. I feel like this might not be accurate with the cost anymore, depending on when this was made. Probably a long time ago. Miles per gallon. If we went, yeah. 15 miles per gallon at 300 miles traveled, yeah, it's gonna be like $7.38. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so, not anymore. That's cool. Canada? Well, this was in Washington, so I guess it's not crazy this car would have gone to Canada at some point. That's kind of neat. And we got our 74 Dodge owner's manual. I don't know if it's got any owner information. It doesn't appear. Well, nope. Well, that's cool that's still in there. People like to keep owner's manuals for some reason. Uh, valve? What is that? Oh, PCV valve. New. Okay. 
door crank. Not for this car. A little bit different knob. Classic bus fuses. No Riley Auto Parts receipt from 2020. 1994 Ford Ranger. Okay, that's not even for this car. So don't need that. The wiring. Oh, it's been cut. I feel like this is something that would go like between a door or something. So I have to look into that one. Dick Knot Spoons, Fisherman's Lure Coat. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> the, the much needed wiper arm bushing. Is this, I'm not sure if Cornets, and I guess if since there's one in here, maybe Cornets have these bushings too. Pieces of plastic for the interior. Tire pressure gauge, metal, so that's probably kind of old. Love box isn't the biggest. What is this? Oh, I think this must be for that power steering pump or something. I see some gaskets. Look at that later. Uh, nothing crazy going on in there. It's a number seven for whatever reason. Ashtray. Okay. Got a. That's maybe for an air cleaner. And 13 cents. Free money. This was kind of cool. I showed that earlier, but I've never seen one like this. Cool Dodge keychain. I have to get that fixed up and use it. It's pretty cool. Let's see if there's anything under the seat. Nothing over here. Uh, nope. Okay, well, we're gonna look under the hood, I guess. Yeah, it's a 318. Uh, master, cylinder, <coughs> master cylinder looks new. An original ignition box though. But the uh, voltage regulator has been replaced. Let's see. Good green coolant, that's always a good sign. Power steering, power brakes, probably should replace that belt. Two barrel carburetor. Not too bad. Looks pretty clean under there. Not a lot of options on the body tag here. We do got the turn signal indicators on the fender. This car doesn't really have a whole lot of options. It's a 318 V8, nine passengers to the third row, automatic which was required with the third row seat, but no air conditioning, nothing like that. So just kind of like your basic car, really. Doesn't even have tinted glass, I guess, because there was no air conditioning. And these are always missing on these cars. And I always, I always wonder about that, they're metal. Uh, they're held on by plastic, little plastic things maybe that's why they always fall off the plastic gets little 
but they're always missing on these 74 Dodge Coronets. I don't know, like they're always gone. This is the first one I've seen that has all of them, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Not too bad. That's kind of the uh, first look. Maybe do a little bit more uh, in-depth video later on once I kind of get this thing sorted out a little bit better, get that gas tank situated, get the, the tires matching and good because these tires are old as sin. I mean, they're, they're not good. And they're all different tires, different rims, so we'll have to see about getting those replaced and going over the brakes and whatnot. Hope you enjoyed this video on the 1974 Dodge Coronet Custom 9-passenger wagon. Like I said, this thing's all the way from Everett, Washington. It's got a new home here in North Carolina. There's going to be future videos on this car, me getting it uh, to a more roadworthy state. It does run and drive, but I don't really run it on a want to run it on a boat tank and stuff like that. It's got ancient mix match tires, different size wheels and things. So stay tuned for future videos on this car where I kind of go over the whole thing, working on it, things like that. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And also check out the Patreon for extra content, behind the scenes stuff, bloopers, different kinds of things that you won't find on YouTube. Stay tuned for more videos and catch you on the next one. But what about this sign? Check out this sign. I think it was very fitting to get this top quality used car sign. Um, this was an NOS sign, actually. It was never used, so it's got a little wear from being in storage, but it's brand new, even had the original shipping box. So I'm gonna get this thing, you know, cleaned up and mounted up on the wall. If I get a nice shop someday, I'll, I'll mount it up outside for the world to see. So all the way from near Salt Lake City.